All right, welcome to The Woodshed, episode number 14. I'm John Lamberton. Today, I want to pick up where I left off last time with swing feel. And this video is gonna be talking about swing feel in an abstract sense, where we're able to systematically explore new rhythmic inflections by basically plugging in different numbers to get uh, a variety of proportions. And we'll look a little bit more about the dynamics of you know, having these long, short pairs. But um, to just briefly summarize the last video, um, I was exploring how there's you know this idea of swing feel, where it's more of like literally about the feel. It's about the fluidity of how somebody handles rhythm versus swing feel in the sort of structural sense where it's saying, you know, you're turning two eighth notes into triplets and tying the first two. So it's instead of one to one, it's two to one. Instead of 50, 50, it's, you know, 66, 33. Um, so that was the gist of that. And I wanted to continue with that. So um, if we look abstractly at this idea, you know, what are we doing? We're taking something even and making it a little bit lopsided. We're instead of doing one to one, we're doing long short. Okay, so basically, for any given pulse, we can plug in any sort of combination of long and short durations. And so in this case, I'm doing it um, in a pulse preserving manner. So basically, keeping the pulse the same, I'm using tuplets to go through different uh, ways of breaking up that pulse. So let's say we're doing 60 beats per minute. 60 beats per minute means each pulse is one second or 1000 milliseconds. So what's a realistic sort of top end for how, uh, you know, how much granularity we can have in this rhythm that's sort of masquerading as swing? Um, well, th I'd like to introduce the idea of a rhythmic threshold or like a sort of micro rhythmic threshold. What is the smallest degree of rhythm or time that you can comfortably maintain and sustain? So just for example, um, I like to use 100 milliseconds. Maybe you can push it a little bit beyond that. Um, in this case, I went as far as to divide that one second pulse into 11. But you know, you might say like 10. Um, but you know, this idea is basically interesting because you know, if you listen to John Coltrane play Giant Steps at 300 beats per minute, what is the pulse for 300 beats per minute? It's 200 milliseconds. 200 milliseconds to get that true two to one academic swing it's kind of not going to happen because you're talking what like 60 something milliseconds that's really fast and you know maybe 200 beats per minute that's that's 300 millisecond pulses divide that by three you get 100 milliseconds it's reasonable but basically we can do other types of swing that maintain that finer threshold um but what it means is that since we're getting more angular and having sort of finer differences in proportion, we have to do slower tempos. So, you know, in the case of, <laughs> if you wanna do sort of a geometry of 11 units per pulse, that means that, you know, to do the same sort of 100 milliseconds, you need 1.1 seconds instead of, you know, the 300 beats per minute, 200 milliseconds. So it's gonna be a way different tempo. So I did this in a pulse preserving manner. So Basically, everything's at 60 beats per minute, um, so that means one second, and um, I go as far as 11 divisions of that pulse. So now, you know, we're saying long, short. So let's say we have, you know, one to one, maybe two to one, that's, you know, dividing by three, maybe three to one, that's dividing by four. So one uh, sort of property of this concept is that uh, if we say long plus short proportions, like uh, that sum is going to be your subdivision. So if you say uh, five and four are your long and short, it means your subdivision is going to be nine. So um, you can basically, you know, do any combination of this and just take the sum and that is going to be the tuplet that you need. And, you know, uh, basically multiply that tuplet number by your threshold, that finds the sort of maximal tempo. And um, another way to think about this, if you don't want to do it the duration duration durational way, is uh, to basically say, you know, maybe you're using septuplets 
And if you're at 60 beats per minute, that means each one seventh of the pulse is going to be 60 beats per minute times seven. So, you know, that's not really in tempo territory more. It's more just like a frequency of impulse. Um, but you can do it either way as the duration divided by the tuplet or the tempo times the tuplet. Uh, so just two different ways of, you know, sort of considering uh, this. And, you know, there's basically there's a performance threshold here. You know, not many people can really play much faster than 100 milliseconds. Um, but there's also the perceptual threshold. So, you know, even if somebody were to do that 300 beats per minute with a two to one ratio, basically, you know, fluidly blowing triplets where each triplet is, you know, 60 something milliseconds, then, you know, you're still going to hear it and be like, I can't really tell what's going on because we're talking about milliseconds here for content. And so, you know, you want to be able to spread your content content out in a way where you can perceive the proportions and whatnot. So, okay. So, you know, we've mentioned that long plus short equals the tuplet or the subdivision of the pulse. Now you might say, um, you know, is there another way to quantify this? Well, if we say, you know, one to one, uh, for our straight eighth notes, if we think of it as one pulse or, you know, maybe like a full rotation of a circle, you could say, okay, it's 50, 50, like 50%, 50%, or it's 180 degrees plus 180 degrees. Um, you know, maybe next you go to two to one. So it's 66%, 33%, you know, with some change. Um, and then degrees wise, it's 240 degrees plus 120 degrees. So I think of this as like the sharpness of it. And do we go past 75% where it's, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, Cause that's not really swing anymore, but um, it could be, it's still a, a rhythmic inflection that's based around long, short, it's just not swing in our conventional sense of the term. So when I first started doing this, I basically you know started with even, then I went to triplet, then I went to 16th notes, then to quintuplets. And you know, when you're in quintuplets, you can do three plus two, you can do four plus one, and you know, you go up to six. Um, you, you might say, okay, three plus three, but that's the same as one plus one. Um, so in terms of the proportion of the pulse, it's going to be the same, but you could say five plus one. That's six, and that's a new sort of proportion that we could work with. Um, and you know, you can keep on going. And basically, you know, when you're at eleven, you can have like, you know, seven plus four. You can have eight plus three. You can have nine plus two. You can have ten plus one. But that ten plus one, like, that's getting a little bit out there. But it's still long short, um, and it has a defined proportion. Um, but you know, you're gonna have to play at a very slow tempo to really get that. But you know, maybe there's a better order to hear these that don't just go through like kind of like this plus that, that plus that. And so if we look at the delta between the pulses, so one plus one, the delta is zero because one minus one is zero. But in the case of that 10 to one, where it's, you know, an under couplet, 11 notes per pulse, um, our delta is going to be nine because 10 minus one is nine. And so basically the higher you get, the more sort of sharp and choppy it's going to be. Um, and so I, you know, calculated all these and I arranged them in terms of that uh, delta and the delta per as a percentage of um, the overall subdivisions. So it basically ordered it, um, not in any way where it's like progressing via tuplets, but in a way where you can see that it's gradually going from, you know, one to one evenness approaching sort of this like 100% uh, mark. So if you have eighth notes and you know, you're drawing the line at the 50% mark, um, you, know, you can keep on going the you know, uh, dotted eighth and 16th is basically 75%. You can't get beyond 100%. If you're at 100%, then you're just playing one note. But you know, theoretically, you could do like, <laughs> you could do 99 and 1%. Um, but that's just not going to be humanly feasible. So um, the percentage has to be between 50 and 100, unless we're doing the reverse. So in you know in the case of standard swing, if we did instead of two plus one, we did one plus two, then you know basically just be flipped around. And um, so instead of 66 percent, it would be 33 percent. But let's stick to long short instead of short long. Um, so if we look at this. Uh, ordered in terms of the delta, 
then you get this sort of progressively sharper type of swing. And so if we want to like, you know, take swing seriously with tradition in mind a little bit, maybe you could say, you know, five plus four counts because it's over 50%. Um, basically anything between anything greater than 50% and less than 75%. Maybe that's a reasonable way of thinking about swing. Um, so, you know, you keep on going through and let's see what you have here. So five plus four, then uh, four plus three, you know, with subtuplets, three plus two and quintuplets, five plus three with 30 second notes, uh, seven plus four in 11 notes uh, per pulse, then three to one, we have our standard swing, uh, seven to three, so that'd be 10 notes, uh, 10 divisions of the pulse. Uh, next one is septuplets, grouped five plus two, then uh, 11 divisions of the pulse into eight plus three, um, and so on and so on. And so, you know, basically, while 60 beats per minute is pretty slow and you don't want to always be playing at this tempo, it's, you know, this is a huge amount of options for slightly different types of swing. Instead of 66%, maybe it's 55%. Uh, instead of 66%, maybe it's, you know, 69%. Um, so, uh, you know, just some things to play with. And, um, you know, if you want to get this document, um, shoot me an email at lambertronics at gmail.com and I'll send it your way um, or the MIDI file or whatever you desire from it but anyway um this is just basically exploring some alternate uh swing geometries by taking the long short idea abstractly and plugging in different numbers and sort of ordering them in ascending level of angularity so um hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you learned something um let me know if you have any questions or any topics you want me to focus on um for future videos and if you haven't already please subscribe like you know, thumbs up, whatever, uh, to help with the algorithm. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.